thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, I'm based over in Lee, in, uh, in the, the, the far side of Greater Manchester. Uh, and today, the intention is just to tell you a little bit about uh, the story I've got. Uh, I've also got a partner who I live and work with, of Jane, so she will get mentioned quite a, a little bit in this, uh, in this story. Uh, but joining communities is where we are today, which is a social enterprise. Um, what I'm going to look at is, is the background to, to Jane and Paul and where we came from. Uh, the beginning of joining communities, uh, the journey that we've had, the, a very enjoyable journey, where we are today, uh, what we've got for the future, and then I'll open it up for questions. But do feel as though you've got a question during the presentation, if you'd like me to clarify anything or ask something particular. If it's a lengthy question, we can probably I can ask you probably to hold it up until the end. Um, the background. Yeah, Jay and Paul, um, we've, uh, J Jay comes from an education background from when she was she left university, but I came through a, a, an engineering degree and moved into education later on. Um, when we got together, we decided to create a, a, uh, an organisation. We wanted to work for ourselves, and that's where JP Training came, which was quite simply Jane and Paul. Uh, and we, we opened that up in... 2003, uh, working on the back really of others' funders, so we were going around and supporting different people in different ways. We worked in uh, HMP Manchester, we worked in the probation in Manchester, we worked in the Youth Offender uh, Centre in Hindley, we worked for trading organisations to support their apprenticeships, and uh, we also worked supported some loan direct centres <clears throat> in terms of the auditing to make sure the paperwork had been in, been filled in correctly. Um, and it was all very much based upon what were the basic skills at the time, which later became um, key skills uh, and before the, the current functional skills. Um, but we were hit by the recession, 2008, where everything seemed to fall away from us, and we lost quite a lot. We lost our house. We lost our car, our business, uh, and we, we were basically homeless. <laughs> so, but we were fortunate to get a local authority house, uh, which wasn't far from where we, the old house was. Uh, but we'd got this mass amount of personal debt because the house wasn't wor worth as much as what we paid for it. So there was uh, uh, excess on that to be paid, and still is to this day. We had lots of other debts, which we've been paying off slowly, but we have made some progress. Uh, but one thing that we learned right at the very beginning was not to blame anybody. It was us that had got it, got us in that situation, and it was us that was going to get, get us out of that situation. We could have blamed bankers, government, councils, next door neighbour, anybody, but it wasn't the way to go. We had to think positively. We had to move on and, and look for the next challenge. Uh, and we had belief in ourselves, so the journey started. Um, very quickly then, uh, whilst we were unemployed, um, it was at an event that was held by one of the um, one of the the agencies that we're working with to try and get back into work. Uh, it was the jobs fair, and there was an organisation there called the School for Social Entrepreneurs, and they'd been assigned by Wigan Council to try and set up more social enterprises in the borough. So it, what it involved was a forty-week course one day a week uh, and we we were introduced to other social entrepreneurs and ways of running the business it was very helpful it opened us opened a lot of doors up to different people uh, so that went on for like I say for 40 weeks and towards the end of it um, we attended a an, ev an event in uh, in a bunker <laughs> an old lurid shelter it was in Preston uh, and it was about the new uh, fit note uh, that was uh, that was coming into f into place. And as a as a um, an icebreaker at the very beginning, we were asked to go and speak to somebody else. And I spoke, to, I picked somebody, a young lady from HMIC of all places. And, uh, and uh, when I told her about what we were doing, she said, "Oh, I know somebody that might want your service." And lo and behold, a few days later, I got a call from uh, uh, a work. It wasn't a work program provided, it was a, uh, somebody who had a contract with job, the job centre. 
uh, and they said we want to deliver we want somebody to deliver employability skills and maths and English in Lee uh, and um, at this stage we didn't have a we didn't have a um, we didn't have a building and we didn't have a business so what we needed to do we needed to to go out and, and and find a creative business first of all. So we were put through the school for social entrepreneurs. We were put in touch with an accountant who helped us set a, a, a company up that was limited by guarantee, which was a social enterprise. And we knew a, an estate agent who put us in touch with a, a, a building which was five minutes walk from where we lived. Uh, and so everything was falling into place. Now, initially in the building, we, we only leased uh, two or three rooms now, but we've got the whole building now. And things have moved on, uh, and we've gone on from strength to strength. But uh, we were still struggling. Um, we got the employability skills up and going, and the first course started in two th January 2011. Unfortunately, by March 2011, the coalition government had come in, decided to stop all these programmes, and they'd set, they'd set up the work programme, uh, which did receive some bad press at the time, but that's not nothing to do with us, that's not our argument. But we'd missed the supply chain to get onto the uh, work program, so we'd, we we had to really rummage around and scrap around for bits of funding to keep us going, and 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 we we learned a lot in uh, how to apply for funding, and we learned to talk to people and ask questions. You know, the question, the answers to any questions always no until you ask it. So we learned how to ask in a nice way and explain what we were doing. And we had to build a reputation up and that was the key to us being as successful as we are today building that successful reputation up but we still had this rising debt uh, but we did get a lot of support and that is always available it came from the school for social entrepreneurs it came from unlimited you may have heard of they're based in bradford i think uh the they're a, a, an organization that support uh, social enterprises and third sector organisations, very very helpful. And um, we had a lot of mentors from different organisations through them. We had somebody from NatWest Business Banking. We had somebody from, um, I'm trying to think, uh, one of the finance companies. I can't the the, the name just slips out of my mind. But we had a lot of mentors, and they came in and gave us some corporate mentoring, which was very helpful. You know, they asked because because Jane and I lived together. And we work together it's very easy for us to say oh yeah that, Jane, that's a good idea yeah we'll do that then we, it gave us that objective view the mentors really helped and they'd, they'd ask questions why are you doing that what for and they, they, they challenged us in, in, a, in a very positive way which was really quite useful um where are we today well right at the beginning we tried to uh, work with wiccan council for a long time in, in terms of a second tier funding organisation. They they drew down the funding from the uh, skills funding agency to deliver community programmes, sim similar to what is delivered in some high schools throughout the country. Uh, and because we were we were working with the unemployed, that worked worked very well because they were the council were addressing the unemployment, and through this community learning, we were able to satisfy their targets and what local needs were as well. Uh, from a uh, an, an initial ten thousand pound contract the first year for a, a small number of learners, we soon last year we went up to fifty thousand um, pounds, which was quite a, a remarkable incre increase. And that becomes year on year. But we still have to fill an application form in for it. But it's been very very helpful. We can college that was similar sort of funding, but we didn't pick them up until the year after the first year with the council and again they only gave us a small amount uh, for this for, for two years actually and it, again but last year they also gave us fifty thousand pounds so we, we'd actually achieved the maximum we could have as a second tier funder so that was very helpful so we've made some big successes and the good things foundation we've worked with them uh since the I think it was called Race Online, uh, the Martha Lane Fox Initiative, uh, where we got so much per learning for, for getting them on, online. And we've been on different programs. We're now working with them on the uh, Future Digital Inclusion Fund. And we've, uh, we're also talking to them about the helping people with budgeting 
help him get on the, the, the health agenda and the digital and health mixed together. Uh, job centres, DWP, they've been very, very helpful in terms of referring people to us uh, because they like what we're doing. Uh, they prefer us to a lot of other providers as well, and they've, they've openly said that because we're getting them what they want to do. Uh, we have a number of health partners we're working with now in light of um, the devolution that's coming into Manchester. Uh, G GMCC, Greater Manchester Chamber of Commerce, uh, that's more of a corporate situation, but again, it gets us a lot of links into different organisations, and particularly with the, the breakfast meetings, we're able to attend those periodically. And Ants Network, they, Ants Network is a social enterprise arm of the Chambers, and they are big in, in linking up the corporate world with the social enterprise world in terms of getting them to spend the corporate social responsibility money. So they've got a lot of money available in terms of that. Now, that's very new to us, so we're just breaking ice with that, and we've got uh, a meeting next week, in fact, a breakfast lunch, well, a lunch, actually, it is, yeah, uh, with, the chair, with the chairman of, of Ants, and he's going to introduce us to one of the big players in that. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we may well have some, some more money next week. Um, what to the future? Uh, we're operating in Wigan at the moment, which is uh, it's one of the largest uh, boroughs in Greater Manchester, of which I think there are nine. Um, so we're, the intention is to, to move out because devolution's coming in, uh, in into Greater Manchester, uh, in, uh, and it's, it's coming in quite a big way. They're linking health and work together. Uh, and so the intention is to move out across there uh, and build a reputation up. And we're doing this with the chambers in attending their breakfast meetings, which allow us to meet other people and introduce ourselves to those people in different areas. Uh, like I say, the health agenda has been really big uh, and, and the way it's linking into, into getting people back into work because when we first set off, uh, the people that came into the building were generally unemployed and looking for work. A lot of those people are back in now and the people that are still unemployed tend to be those with multiple barriers, long-term health conditions, um, low skills, low incompetence and the probably been unemployed for generations within the family uh, and it's those people that are really struggling to get and, and we are now working with those and they've got health issues you know they're, they're probably limited they're probably d dependent upon the, the doctors to get them through the day sometimes but uh, we've recently been funded to have somebody work with them on a one-to-one -one basis uh, which is proving very successful more successful than we thought it would be in fact he, he informed us the other day, said if I, if I don't take anybody else on this year, uh, I've still got enough work to take me to Christmas, which is quite remarkable. And so we're taking and feeding that back into uh, the council who funded us for the post, and hopefully we'll try and get some more money off them as well, so that would be nice. Uh, digital everywhere. We're, we're, we're really advocates of the digital uh, uh, agenda. We, we, we like uh, digital tools, we're very much on social media, as Kevin's mentioned, he's been following our story. Uh, we had a visit from um, the Chief Executive of Wigan Council, who came round to see us, uh, last early this month it was, and she said, I really thought you were a bit bigger than you are, because, and she said, it's probably because of the work that you're doing on the social media side, and because we put things out, we get the tutors to tell people what's going on in the in the classes. Ben, who's on the Healthy Centre Place programme, he tells people what's happening out there. If we go out to events, Jane and I, we tell people where we're going. So there's a big story about joining communities, and it's been, been very helpful. Challenges. Uh, it's dealing with the disruption, uh, the disruptive technology, if you will. Um, and, uh, it's affecting a lot of people. People come into the centre, uh, you know, the, 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 I don't want to do social media, I don't want computers, uh, this, you know, all all the very reticent attitudes they've got, but by the end of it, the end of the first week, they don't want to go. The end of the second and third week, they, they can't understand why they were behaving like that, but it really is working very well for them. And it, it's fa fantastic what they're finding out about, um, what what they can get on the, on the computers and the internet. Um, that's, Sums up what I'm 
I was going to talk about. Um, I'm not quite sure how long I've lasted, but if you need to contact me, please uh, find me on Twitter, uh, at Paul Wurtswick, uh, LinkedIn, uh, I very much use LinkedIn quite a lot, and Google Plus, probably not as much, but uh, I've got a couple of accounts on, on Google Plus. Um, and then finally, uh, have you got any, got any, any questions? Uh, I just talk for a moment to give uh, Anne and Andrew a chance to sort of type in any of their questions. Uh, but um, I, I really, a couple of things that sort of leapt out as you were talking through for me, uh, Paul. Uh, so firstly, you have faced huge, huge challenges uh, and, and that really comes across. And I think that, that probably does a couple of things for you. One, it, it's made you guys really determined. I, I really get the uh, the feeling that you, you you and Jane, you just will not go back to where yeah. you, <laughs> you will fight for every penny. No, 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 no yeah. not at all. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, one of the things we, we say to ourselves, we've had some really trying times with it. There's, we've sat here on a Friday evening and we've thought, it's not working, this. Can we just pull the shutters down and go on? And then the question says, well, on Monday, what do we do? They said, well, you go and sign on at the job centre. And we said, well, we're not doing that. And then we've carried on. And and we've, so, somebody has always come from somewhere to help us out. Uh, we, I don't know how. It's come at the right time. And we we, we still think that ourselves. You know, we're, we're positive. It, it will work because we're doing the right things. People tell us we're doing the right things. The, the reputation is, is as good as some larger organisations. We're helping people achieve targets. So it's that reputation that we've built up on, and, and it's uh, it's really, really helping. Yeah, I, I, and the other thing that it will also give you is is when people come through your door, you, that they'll yes. identify yeah. with you an, an awful lot better than, than maybe with, with people that haven't had some of those challenges. Um, Anne's got a very good yeah, question yeah. there about uh, linking with other third sector organisations. Sorry, say that again. Dan's just popped in the chat panel. Do you link with any other third sector organisations to deliver your programme? Yeah, yes. Um, we, 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 we collaborate with, we will collaborate with anybody uh, to deliver the programmes. Uh, at the moment, no, but we do attend what's known as a digital task force with uh, that's with Wigan Council uh, because they keep telling us they got the Digital Council of the Year last year, but uh, I said, all right, that's gone now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we work very closely with them, not just in getting the funding off them, but in, in, in the digital task force. And on the digital task force, there's a number of other third sector organisations. And we, we, we go out, we, we're doing outreach at the moment uh, in, in a number of different centres because we were asked to, to replicate joining communities on the other side of the borough in, in, in Wigan Town. But it it would have been too expensive to do that, so we've decided just to go and pick up on outreach, and uh, you know we're we, we're trying to work with them in different this sort of about nine nine townships in in uh, in in Wigan. Uh, they're not probably not called townships anymore, but uh, and we're trying to get a pl a place that we can drop into in different community centres um, because we're very pleased to work with others, we'll share things with people, we're not precious, it doesn't belong to us the, because what the long term aim I think is for, for us to leave joining communities and let somebody else run it within the borough when it's up and running and when we've found the right people to do that but so yes and we do work with third sector organisations wherever we can and wherever they want to work with others as well I, and uh, just one of the other things that, that I, I'd kind of picked up on uh, was how I, I think you, you guys were probably one of the first centres that I noticed doing two things I, and the, the one that I want to mention first is is joining things together so uh, when you guys when I, when I see the tweets from your um, your tutors when they're doing a, a week's course with someone I know you, you actually do four days rather than a full week of that gives people a day to actually do. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, but you don't just do digital skills, you do 
a bit of looking after yourself and a bit of budgeting and a bit of digital skills and a bit of job seeking. And it's kind of, it's that, I, I see it as a, as a holistic approach. Uh, and I, was, was that a, a sort of a conscious decision or was it kind of the, just sort of building the, the, the package up to suit what people were asking for? Um, well, yeah, I, th I think it was probably conscious and subconscious that came in. Uh, but when we first set off, Joining Communities was actually called Joining Communities Program. And uh, the, the JCP, it came from uh, Jane, Caroline and Paul. And so we had to fit some words to it. And it, it sort of fit all right at the time. It was not quite sweet in a way, I suppose. But uh, uh, Caroline left. Uh, she, she didn't want to carry on with it so we we thought well and at that time jane and i thought well it's not a program really it's about communities and about joining so we, we kept the jc um and, and we just decided to call ourselves joining communities and, and at that time we just said it's not just about joining sort of um higher falls with atherton or tilsley or lee and wigan it's it's any kind of a community it might be the BME, it might be lone parent community. It's not postcode bound. It's just, you know, unemployed people or lone parents. It's joining them all together so that they can, they've got somewhere to come and talk. And we get people in our dropping centre now who just come in for a brew because we give a free brew away. And sometimes it's the only, it's the only drink they've had in a day. And, and it's just a way of joining them together. And it's asking them, what, what is it you want in life? And it's talking to the job centres and asking them what they want. And it's listening. And what the community learning allows us to do, the funding that we get, it's not fixed. You don't have to deliver IT or wine tasting or anything like that on on these. It, you can design a course and you can change it. As long as you've you've done the necessary paperwork, you can you can add into it how to use Universal Job Match. And then you can take it out next week if you wanted. And it's it's really allowed us to, to, to find something that that really the people want and we do ask them as part of the course they, they've got to evaluate it and say what they liked and what they didn't like and, and the, the tutors are constantly challenging them with asking them what they want and what they don't want um, you know going back to the council well, I must say that the, the system whilst the councils might get criticised for being bureaucratic they, they probably are but what they provided us was, was, was course paperwork which enabled us to, gave us a good start to working with skills funding money so so that's been very beneficial to us but but yeah it's about the, the whole package it's it's about giving them what they really want and and, and yeah subconscious and conscious i think yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good stuff I, and you already touched on uh how you use social media to to really tell your story and and I, i've just mentioned there how your your tutors they they they'll tweet and they'll put on Facebook pictures throughout the week when they're doing a, a, a week's course with people. And you mentioned how that, uh, yeah. when, you, when you talk to some of your, uh, when you talk to your local authorities or, or your chamber of commerce, how they, uh, how it surprises them how small an organization you are, but you make that big splash. Uh, and, uh, I think that is, it's something that we all need to sort of learn a bit more from, uh, it, it's yes, yes. Just a, it's an easy way to tell a bigger story than we've maybe traditionally been able to do. So. Yeah, yeah. I, th I think we noticed uh, that we we, we recognised that social media it was a, a free way of, of telling your story to people. You know, when you looked at what it would cost you in the in the you know the dailies and the, the, the actual newspapers and magazines, it was expensive. But you could there was a free tool here. That you could tell the world as long as you you know there's, there's a way of doing it there's an etiquette in terms of using the social media to make sure you get your, your point out and and i think um the big even the, the people who want it now are, are, are beginning to realize that and they're they're actually there's only like on facebook on your facebook page you you can't actually advertise unless you actually pay for it which is unfortunate but there's a crafty way you can do it do different things but but yeah it's it's really been a good tool um, and, and and it's it's helped us in a big big way, definitely yes. For sure. Um, yeah. So Andrew's already had to uh, had to uh, uh, leave us. Anne, is is there anything else that you'd like to uh, grill 
uh, Paul about, or, or even if you if there's anything that you want to ask me about uh, from from the Good Things Foundation side of things, uh, I I think this this is probably around about the right time to to uh, sort of wrap up. Uh, I, I I find it fascinating what what Paul's been uh, uh, up to over in Wigan, uh, and even though it is over in Wigan and it's the wrong side of the Pennines, uh, I, I I'm full of admiration for the work that you do, Paul. <laughs> Uh, it won't be off yeah, yeah. people from Yorkshire saying it, but I think I think you're doing a grand job over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for that. Yeah, it's it's nice. It's nice.